All right, so now the triangle choke. Um, triangles are one of the most powerful chokes in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, usually done from the guard, but they can also be done from other places as well, like the mount. Uh, there are many, many different ways to set a triangle up, and there are many different ways to actually finish the triangle itself. Okay? It's very, very difficult to select just one setup, one way uh, to demonstrate this. So just understand that I'm explaining how a triangle works and functions, uh, the mechanics of the choke itself, what should be happening during the choke. But as far as the setup and how you actually get there, there are numerous different ways. This is gonna be based on your style as a practitioner and, and many other things. Uh, so just make sure that if you have a question, if you have really long legs versus really short legs, that's gonna change the way that you do triangles. Uh, so there's really no substitute for training on the mat. This is a live martial art. You need to be in there uh, training at your school and interacting with, with your teammates. And so the, the way that you set this up is, is really gonna be, is really gonna differ from person to person. I'm just showing a really basic way, uh, basically just here from open guard, I've got grips on the sleeves. If this were no gi, I could obviously just do C, C grips on his wrist itself. I'm shrimping out and then the uh, arm and hip side uh, that ends up on top, I'm shoving that in between my legs. Okay, now I'm using my uh, knee on his collarbone kind of as a pivot point. I'm gonna circle my foot over as I get myself offline. I'm clamping down hard with my calf. I'm then achieving my figure four. And because of my angle, I really don't need to do a whole lot of adjusting and stuff. I'm just kind of jumping into it and trying to get that triangle pretty quickly. And in general, I wanna make sure that I'm nice and offline. Uh, I could underhook his leg in a self-defense situation to stop him from picking me up and slamming me on the ground or something like that. Or I could just pick up his leg up in order to make him fall over, finish this as an arm bar. Lots of different reasons uh, I would do that. But in general, I wanna make sure that I'm dorsiflexing my foot, I'm getting the back of my knee all the way to my ankle, and then I'm beginning to squeeze. So as you can see, uh, this is a head and arm choke, essentially, I'm just using my legs. So his own arm is choking him, his shoulder area is choking him on this side of his neck, and then my hamstring is choking him on the other side of the neck. So the prerequisite here is one arm inside of my guard and one arm outside. So this is a rule in jiu-jitsu. Uh, when he is passing guard, he wants to make sure that he doesn't let this happen. Okay, so he doesn't want to, you know, get just kind of a lazy underhook and just leave one arm inside because when, when that happens, you're going to get probably triangled or armbarred. Uh, it's also important to understand the connection between triangle and armbar and omoplata. They all happen from the arm being in between your legs or inside the guard. Okay, so that's a rule for him to follow and it's a rule, it's, it's something that I have to force him to do if he's not doing it for me. So that's the purpose of going like this shoving that arm out of my way. Now, what I'm doing is in order to get my hip line up to the level of the choke, I'm using my far side foot on his hip. So I'm picking my hips up and I'm correcting my angle as well. So I'm maintaining this other grip on the sleeve and then as I move myself over, I'm carrying that arm with me, okay? If I left that arm behind, even if I get my figure four here, he is not getting choked on both sides of his neck. Okay, so I can squeeze all day long and I can start to cut off some blood flow here and I might tap out, you know, people that are, are really new to jujitsu and they're just kind of worried and they don't understand what's going on. Uh, but for a seasoned practitioner, he knows that while he might be uncomfortable, he's not going to go to sleep. Okay, so if he's able to alleviate the, the squeeze on this side of his neck, I'm not going to get a triangle here. So there's a couple reasons for this. First and foremost, his arm is not across. That's why he's not getting choked right now. Also, my head is in line with my partner's head. Okay, now there are lots of different variations, but in general, with a traditional regular triangle, I don't want to be in line with him. Okay, I want to be off in the direction that this hand should be pointing. Okay. If I do this, this will also, not only is this a good triangle choke and allows me to underhook the leg, all that good stuff, but it also makes it really easy to switch to armbar. Okay. So from my figure four, I can simply switch to crossing my feet and then just get a quick armbar right there as well. Okay. That's one of the reasons that the direction he turns when trying to defend the triangle is really, really important. Okay. So I want to show that again from another angle. So I'm just starting off with my feet on the hips and I have grips on both arms, okay? 
This is the standard open guard position for when your partner is on their knees, trying to pass on their knees. If I don't have arm control, he's gonna be getting under hooks and passing my guard really quickly, and I'm certainly not gonna be doing a triangle to this person, okay? So I've just got pocket grips on both sides. I'm shrimping out, again, the, the arm that ends up on top is the one that punches that hand and just gets it far away. Now at this type of triangle, I'm doing it kind of quickly. So I'm kind of jumping up and just getting straight to that figure four and choking him. I have kind of short legs, so as soon as I you know, really get my, my figure four locked up, it's very, very tight. So that's the reason that I'm, I'm not doing it most of the time as I'm teaching. Uh, but if, if this is set up a little bit more incrementally, I can push and kind of switch arms so that I'm shoving that thing far away from me. I can reach directly past the head, grab my shin, adjust that angle, and then get it locked up uh, really well like that. So I'd rather be way off line like this, grabbing. And then as I squeeze the triangle, um, you know, sometimes if my partner has a really thin neck or if I have really long skinny legs, uh, sometimes this squeeze isn't quite good enough. So what I want to do is just imagine that I'm figure fouring my legs. I actually want to squeeze my knees together like this. Okay, so I can squeeze by flexing my, my muscles and my legs. That's going to obviously make it a little bit tighter. I can bring my leg down, the leg that is more or less straight down in order to clamp my leg deeper into his body. And then the last thing that I can do is to squeeze my knees together like this. That's gonna make it super tight. Uh, if I still need a little bit more, I can of course grab the head and just kind of squeeze that as well. Uh, that's gonna be a really, really tight triangle choke. Now, one of the most common mistakes that I see here, uh, especially with people that use their hand and the leg uh, to force their leg where it should be, is they will reach and they'll grab their toes like this or grab the end of their foot or they'll try to grab on the outside, something like this. In a perfect world, I'm gonna reach directly past the head and I'm gonna grab my shin, okay? I don't wanna grab my foot. I don't wanna to try to be out here like this. A um, Couple different reasons for that, mainly uh, just because it's, it's a lot stronger to grab the shin. It's just a better way of doing it. Uh, but with my foot, I'm almost uh, you know, like toe holding myself, which is a fairly advanced uh, submission. Uh, but I can, I can be hurting my ankle or hurting my knee right now. So this, this twisting motion is just putting a lot of undue stress uh, on, on my knee and my ankle. So just, I would just rather grab my shin, get it all locked up just like that. So that's the triangle choke. Uh, really, it kind of starts in the closed guard, um, but I'm, I'm showing, you know, with my, my legs already open, the feet on the hips. But again, there's lots of different ways that we can go into that. We just need to make sure that we understand uh, that the shoulder is choking one side, your uh, hamstring is choking the other, that the arm needs to be over, the top leg needs to be facing the other way, and that we can, uh, all those different ways that we can cinch up and make it super tight, make that a super uh, effective position.